lift up your voice and say father this morning let the anointing of the spirit break every yoke in my life let everybody be lifted by your spirit in the name of jesus christ wherever you are lift up your voice somebody i came to tell you this is your moment this is your hour you must not miss it you must approach god like you are the only one god came to this service for this morning say father everybody in my life by your anointing this morning I command them lifted by the power of your spirit. I command every yoke to be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, by your spirit, I enter my rest. By the anointing of the spirit, I enter my rest in the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I come into my rest in the name of Jesus Christ. Every trouble in my life, I command them to go. I speak to every storm in the name of Jesus. We still, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice and talk to him. It's your moment. It's your time. It's your season. It's your season. God is here this morning to do supernatural stuff in your life. But you've got to open your mouth and speak to your heavenly father. Say, Father, everybody in my life be lifted by the anointing of the spirit this morning. Let every yoke of hardship be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, my eyes shall see my desire. Before the end of 2019, my eyes shall see my desires in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who God is speaking to this morning, but I'd like somebody to say, my eyes shall see my desires in the name of Jesus. Nothing will limit me by the grace of God. You are worthy of our praise. Oh, 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 you are worthy of our praise. Choir, help me say. Somebody, you open your mouth and begin to decree. Say, Father, this morning I am lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will hold me down in the name of Jesus. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit. I am unstoppable by the anointing of the spirit i am unstoppable i will reach my goal in the name of jesus i will reach my goal in the name of jesus sorrow shall be far from me one more time is it? Is it? You are the other In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like us to pray a few prayers this morning. I mean, it's a very special service. And I believe God will give somebody a testimony. If you are that person, please let me hear your amen. Amen means you agree with me. I am saying, Lord, so shall it be. Glory to God. Ma brodo zo prede go shaka pale ma zo ko prede gele mo zo vara ma so prede gele mo shaka bala bala ba leke re mo zo prede bo shanda bala ba in Psalm twenty seven and verse thirteen I'm reading from the New King James version David said I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I came to tell you, no matter what you're going through, thus said the Lord. You will see the goodness of the Lord before this year is over. That your amen is not loud enough. I say you will see the goodness of the Lord before this year is over. The Lord said I should tell somebody, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And I will strengthen your heart, said the Lord. God said I will take away this season and I'm going to bring you into a new season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because life operates in season. Life operates in season. Are you getting me? And th th there's no season, you know, that is not palatable, that is designed to last forever. Every season you are not you are not interested in. Every season you are not comfortable with. I came to announce to you by the anointing of the Spirit this morning, that season will be out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said, God will bring you into a new season. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. If you are that person, shout a big amen. 
in verse 6 of the same psalm, David said, And now, somebody say now. now. Psalm 27 and verse 6, say, And now. now. Highlight loud and clear, say, And now. now. It says, And now, my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. There are people whose head shall be lifted up above every adversary around them this morning not tomorrow not the end of this month not november not december this morning david said and now 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 is my head lifted up above all the enemies around about me and of course we would not be talking about a physical enemy in the village or somebody any situation that you don't find good in your life is your enemy somebody's enemy is not anybody in the village it's just poverty somebody's enemy is just laziness are you with me some people's enemy is just laziness because there are no mountain anywhere every man's ignorance is his mountain some people's enemy you know we, we just be some we just be procrastination but by the anointing of the spirit god can break that yoke and then god will give you a new spirit a spirit that just wants to get it done, that just wants to accomplish stuff. A spirit that will not rest until his eyes or eyes sees his or her desire. He said, now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, therefore, because my head has been lifted, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I decree for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ after this special anointing service, you will sing praises to the Lord. In any area of your life where you have been denied praises, I prophesy praises will break forth from that area in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody please slap your neighbor a high five and tell your neighbor, say, I am anointed of the spirit to do exploits in my generation. Say, I'm anointed of the spirit. I can be quiet. I can be calm. I'm anointed of the spirit for supernatural victory. If you believe that, come on, shout a big hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. This, please take your seat. God bless you. I'm going to be very brief in this service because we want to anoint everybody by, this, by the grace of God. I want to make it as short as possible. First John chapter 2 and verse 27. Amen. I'm going to begin uh, something in this service. Amen. And then uh, it will climax in the second service because it's going to be a continuation of the same sermon. Amen. But the, 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 the real body of the sermon will be coming forth in the latter part of the sermon in the, in the second service which is talking about the purpose of the anointing and I'm going to be using Saul the first king of Israel as my case study for the purpose of the anointing when the anointing comes upon the life of a man but notwithstanding let us start to scratch the surface and then we can go deeper in the second service first John chapter 2 and verse 27 glory to Jesus. If you have it, say amen, somebody. And I'd like us to read like mass choir because you know, it's important that we, we, we get to familiarize ourselves with the scriptures, amen, and what God is saying. This is the word of the Lord directed to somebody. Can we read like a mass choir? Everybody want to go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I perceive that only five people read that scripture. Hallelujah. I wanted to read that again. Amen. Glory to Jesus. You know, because, you know, you know when, when you read God's word and then light comes, I'm telling you, it, it, it inspires. Amen. It, it just changes the, the atmosphere around your life it changes your inner attitude amen when you come to a realization in the name of jesus christ that there is an anointing in you and there is an anointing on you which is given by the spirit 
of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That you have an anointing in you that has a capacity to self-teach you. Hallelujah. To guide you and lead you into the truth and into the paths of righteousness. You have an anointing in you that has a capacity to lead you to the place of success. He said, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. He leadeth me to where the green pasture is. That you have an anointing on the inside of you that can lead you in this particular way. You know, can I tell you something, church? I need to listen to me very very, very carefully. Amen. That the reason we come to God is not because we want to get stuff from Him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is not in the business of exchange with us. Are you with me? The inheritance we have in God are not the inheritance of cars and money, they are not the inheritance of houses. The inheritance we have in God is his resurrected life. The life of God that is in us. This is he, Amen. The spirit of God that dwells on the inside of God. Is the primary inheritance we have in God as a new man in Christ. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. The inheritance we have in Christ is our ability to live in two countries at the same time. Oh, how do you hear what I'm saying? Because we have something on the inside of us. I'm a dual citizen. We live in two countries at the same time. I'm a citizen of Nigeria. At the same time, I'm a citizen of heaven. Paul said, our citizenship is in heaven. Glory to God. From where we look for to, to the coming of our Savior. So we have dual citizenship by the spirit that lives on the inside of us. Amen. Because he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Glory to God. The inheritance we have in name and the anointing of the spirit means that the new man in Christ has divinity embedded in his humanity. The new man in Christ is an amalgamation of divinity and humanity. The Godhead is incomplete without you. You are so special, hallelujah, that John will say stuff like, our fellowship is not with the mortals. He said, our fellowship is now with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The one we meet with, we talk with, we have meeting with, is, is God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. We have been elevated to that. that those thoughts are the primary inheritances that we have in God. Glory to Jesus. Because if I earn things with money and cash, then I still don't understand why a man like Warren Buffett, who doesn't even know God, and says there's no God, that God, what you call God, is just uh, a, 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 a freedman in the imagination of a poor man. Because a poor man can't make it. Because he doesn't know what to do. So he has to create something in his mind as a way of comforting himself and say he's called God. Even though he's wrong, are you hearing what I'm saying? But what he's saying is that, you see, when it comes to making money, do what they do, it's the same market, it's the same people, do what they do, make the money they make, sell what they sell, make the money, they, make the money they make, and the rest and that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, but the advantage we have, because by the anointing of the Spirit on the inside of us, are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says we are led by the Spirit. It says the anointing teaches us things to, that, such that we don't need any man to teach us. Hallelujah. It may sound crazy. Hallelujah. I don't need an MBA as it were. Honestly, to be more intelligent than a man with the MBA. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. That is not to say it's not good to have MBA because I have one to the glory of God. But you, you see, there's an anointing on the inside of you. The anointing brings you to a place of supernatural intelligence. So, the advantage you have by that anointing, are you with me? It's such that when people are running elter skelter, looking for how to make it, amen, you don't run like them, hallelujah. You sit back at home, amen, and then you begin to conjure something in the realm of the spirit. Lakote, ibakota, ibarakete, legaga, Lord, Holy Spirit, what next? What do I do? How do I go about it? Son, rise up at 9 o'clock, amen, don't get down to 9.30, amen, get at 9.30, go to this office, go to that office, man, may have been there since 6 o'clock, amen, Lord, be running up and down, it just tells you what to do, it just shows you what to do, eliminates all of the stress around you, and gets you the result without ease. Children of God, by the anointing of the Spirit, result is supposed to come with ease. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
you may be a barrister you may be a lawyer i also know you need the law book you need all of the all of the all of the law cases in this world to win a case but there's an inspiration of the spirit oh you didn't hear what i said there's an inspiration of the spirit and all of this comes by this anointing so he says you have an anointing resident on the inside of you the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, this anointing came into you. Glory to God. This anointing came into your life. Somebody say, I'm anointed by the Spirit. Listen, you must believe this. This mind must be in you. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you must carry the mindset of the anointed. The reason why we are defeated most of the time is that we live in fear. We don't have the mindset of the anointed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I go to places carrying the mindset of the anointed. I tell myself, I am anointed. I'm too defended to lose out on this. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Man of God, why are you buying tickets when you have just applied for visa? I say it's impossible for it not to come out. It's impossible. It's a risk. It's not a risk. I know by the spirit of God, there's no risk. There's no single risk involved. It's impossible. So far, is it not a man who will look at it? So far, he's a man. And the man breathes. It's impossible. Amen. No, it's not an option. Hallelujah. Even if, amen, let me not go there. Even if vital documents are forgotten, no, it's not an answer. There's an anointing of the spirit that teaches you. You see, this anointing wants to lead you in such a way that it wants to take over every aspect of your life. And the anointing came into you the day you gave your life to Christ. Somebody say, I am anointed. As you leave this church this morning, I want you to go out of the mindset of the anointed. Wake up every morning and tell yourself, I'm anointed by the Spirit. The hand of the Lord is upon me. In the name of Jesus, lift up your heads, O ye gates. I command this day, lift up your heads. Hallelujah. Every benefit of today comes to me by the reason of the anointing on my life. Listen to me. There are too many people with defeatist mentality. That's why they fail. You are anointed not to carry a failure mentality the bible says the anointing in you look at it again first john chapter 2 and verse 27 but the anointing which you have received somebody say i have received it come on Allah, i say i've received it it didn't say the anointing which you will receive now now if you have received that anointing then what am i going to do anointing you this morning so what we are doing this morning is called activation somebody say activation Allah is say activation. Because many of you have the anointing on the inside of you, but the anointing is dormant. But as the anointing comes on you this morning, what is on the inside responds to what are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when Mary was pregnant with Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and then she went and visited Elizabeth. The Bible said the moment Mary appeared, what was on the inside lived for joy. There was an activation because something on the outside could connect with something that was on the inside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are carrying some groundbreaking dangerous anointing but the anointing is is just dormant many of you are carrying some inventions that the world have not seen many of you have songs on your inside that the world has not heard many of you have, have books on the inside of you that is yet to be written and yet you are languishing you are talking about you are talking about uh, 500 1000 3000 when there are millions and billions of dollars on the inside of you by the gift and the anointing of the holy ghost you cannot go that way this morning i prophesy every gift of God on your inside every anointing of the Holy Ghost on your inside meant to deliver you, deliver your world, deliver your generation they are coming alive in the name of Jesus somebody who believed that said fire yeah, 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 yeah. so this morning there's going to be an activation glory to Jesus I said glory to Jesus so what is the anointing? Very quickly, the anointing, the anointing is the burden removing, yoke breaking power of God in the life of a man. The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Hallelujah. 
What is the anointing number two? The anointing is the influence of the spirit upon a man that causes him to do what he couldn't have done naturally or causes things to happen that wouldn't have happened on their own. Is the influence of the spirit. Glory to God. Anybody ever seen a man under the influence of alcohol? I mean, real influence of alcohol. Anybody ever seen a man? My friend told me in the course of the week, he said, I stopped drinking in 1982. He said, from that day, I've never tasted beer. He said, because something happened to me in 19... I said, tell me, tell me. He said, in 1982, I got drunk. <laughs> and I went into a house that I don't, I don't know anybody in that house. Are you getting me? He said, I entered the house, opened the door. I don't... Are you getting what I'm saying? Opened the door into the living room of a house, went to the bedroom and slept off. Can you imagine? He said, by the time he woke up, he knew there was trouble. So he now pretended to still be asleep. Hoping that they would just go out or the place would just be free so that you can quickly run out. But the people refused to go out. He said he was there from the night of the previous day that was under an influence and went into a, a, a no man's house. He was there till 5 p.m. the next day. When it was 5 p.m., he told himself, Hunger oh, won't kill me. Make I take shame, stand up. That he stood up in shame and they say, we understand. You are under an influence. I don't think naturally somebody will just, will, you know, we just walk up somewhere. Daddy, can you imagine your gate is just open? Somebody opens the gate and then the, the, the door is open. Open the door just by chance. Opens your bedroom and sleeps off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's not normal. So the anointing also is the influence of the spirit. Something that moves you to do what you won't do naturally. It takes you to places you won't, you won't go naturally. It gives you confidence and boldness to talk to people. You won't, you won't have been able to talk to on your own. Then it gives you the result you couldn't have gotten on your own. I prophesied this morning. Let that anointing rest upon somebody. In the name of Jesus. So what is the purpose of the anointing? Number one, it breaks yoke and removes burden. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that the burden be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck. And by the reason of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. The anointing destroys yoke. I don't know the yoke of the enemy that is on somebody's life. Yoke of barrenness, yoke of failure, yoke of retrogression, yoke of pains and sorrow. When the anointing comes on you this morning, in the name of Jesus, that yoke is destroyed. Number two, the purpose of the anointing. The anointing will set you apart for the use of God. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 30. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 30 as in the case of Aaron. Aaron was a nobody until the anointing came on him. When the anointing came on him, the Bible says that God set him apart for his use. God said, you are now my special person. When the anointing comes on somebody this morning, God is going to put a seal of specialty on you. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? I said, you're going to be so special to God in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, you're going to be so special to God. So the anointing sets apart. The anointing differentiates from the park. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's the anointing. The anointing. Glory to God. The anointing. Amen. I, I, I learned that, I learned that um, customs have become very crazy at the airport now. You know, they say you carry anything 50,000 above. You have to declare, you have to pay duty, and so on and so forth, amen. Those guys are so crazy, amen. And, you know, as I was coming in yesterday, glory to God, amen, I walked like a blind man, like I didn't see them. People were on the queue, joining the queue, joining the queue, joining the queue. I went past the queue, and my wife was going behind me. I didn't to see me. I didn't want, you better follow me if you want to follow me. You better follow me if you want to follow me. So when she saw I was going, she moved out of the queue and joined me, Hallelujah. We went out, we went out just like that, amen. And of course, the guys who will check the luggage as well to be sure, amen. They were there. I, said, I, I don't have time to waste, amen. I walked past between as if he was an invisible man. The anointing can set you apart. What waste people's time? Your time will not be wasted. Why? Because the anointing is on you. So the anointing sets apart. That's one of the purpose of the anointing. If you don't want to struggle the way they struggle, amen. You, 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 you don't want to waste time the way they waste time. You don't want souls to take time the way it takes other people's time. Then the anointing is actually what you need. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. 
I had some meetings in the course of the week. Amen. I thought those meetings would take me like 20 years. I mean, I'm telling you, it, I know it can only be by the Spirit of God. The anointing guarantees speed. It sets you apart for speed. Because there are people under the sound of my voice. Listen, normal pace will not be enough for you again. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Because you're already late. You didn't hear what I said. Normal pace will not be okay again because you're already late. You need to double up. You need supernatural speed. I prophesy by the anointing this morning, that speed is coming on you. Number three, the purpose of the anointing over your life is to protect you against the enemy psalm 89 and verse 20 the bible says i have found david my servant with my holy oil have i anointed him he said the enemy will not they cannot exact on him oh you don't understand that he said the enemy i have anointed him with my holy oil i put my hands on him there's there's the influence of the spirit upon his life he said the enemy cannot exact upon him you think it's normal you think it's natural i've explained that to you before some of us who are here, you, 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 you know what it means. The reason some of you can't go out at night is because there's a cat in your compound. The day you went to, to Wee Wee and you saw a cat, just doing like this. Wah, wah. Since that time, you have refused to go out. You will hold it till morning. Say, cat, they for back here. I, I, I know if you go out. You know, some, of you, you can't, some of you can't deal with rats. There are men here. There are men here who can't kill chicken. I know of a man who will call me during Christmas. I bought chicken. Please come and help my wife to, to slaughter it. Ah, I can't see blood. I can't. They can't kill chicken. Amen. You you know yourself. If you marry a man like that, God help you. You need your neighbor to help you on Christmas and Easter period. You get what I'm saying? And some of them are here. They are listening to me. But as the anointing comes on you today, that thing is changing. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you with me? Are you? And then a 16 year old boy, a 16 year old boy, if not that the anointing of the Lord was on him, a 16 year old boy was standing in his father's hip, and then a lion came and picked one of them. And David was talking like a stupid boy. He said, A lion came up and I went after it. Have you, have you considered that? I wish when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask David a question. When the lion become cockroach? When lion become rat, that you went after it. Are you are you all right? Are you normal? A lion, you say you didn't say it came for me. You know, it's another thing when something comes to you, whether you like it or not. There's this self protection in man. When you have nowhere to go, you will still fight, even if you are good. But this one was not a case of something. He said it came and was and I went after it. Ah, you went after lion. That is the influence of the spirit. You do things that you you won't do naturally. There's no way you can. Fight. I went after it. Yeah, they were, you know, and he talked about it so casually. I went after it, amen, and I killed the lion. It's just like that. He killed the lion, amen. Lion has become cockroach. He just used slippers. Bah, I killed the lion, and I collected my sheep, and I went back. He said, a bear came. Do you know, do you know a bear? A polar bear does not need anything to kill you. One slap, one slap. A bear kills a man with a slap. One slap, bah, it's like 10 bags of cement on you. Bah, end of the road. And a 16-year-old boy said, a bear came and I went after it. What gave you the God to go after a bear? But when you're under the influence of the spirit, you may not have anything and yet you're saying, I'm pursuing a million dollar business and people are laughing at you. Are you normal? Is it for people like you? Don't worry. When you are under the influence of the spirit, you do what normal people don't do, then you get the result normal people don't get. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I prophesy to somebody this morning, I don't care the level you are, but as you come under the influence of the spirit, something is changing in your life something is changing in your life something is changing in your life somebody you are changing level you are moving to a new position you are doing extraordinary things and you will get extraordinary results in the name of Jesus there are some of you under the sound of my voice hear me hear me 10 years from now you'll be bigger than your current employer I know what I'm talking about I said 10 years 5 years from now you'll be bigger than your current employers in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever the enemy is doing to bring you down, it will end up working for your good. Because the anointing changes the game, it changes the equation. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Number four, the purpose of the anointing. The anointing comes to give you honor. It will wash away all field. They say, can anything good come out of Samaria? Hallelujah. But the anointed, the anointing elevated David. And he became king. Glory to Jesus. 
Ezekiel 69. Ezekiel 69. He says, I bathe you with water and wash and wash the blood from you and put ointment on you. I clothe you with an embroidered dress and put sandals of fine leather on you. I dress you in fine linen and cover you with costly garments. I adore you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms and a necklace around your neck. And I put a ring in your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. So you were done with gold and silver. Your clothes were fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered with cloth. Your food was on him, olive oil and finest flour. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen from nowhere. He said, I put ointment on you. I, I decorated you. The anointing breaks honor. It decorates. I said, from nobody, you suddenly became a queen. I prophesied to somebody this morning. Every ugliness in your life will be covered by the beauty of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, the anointing causes you to receive great things. Standards are lifted for you. Your story changes. Simply because of the anointing. Glory to Jesus. In Numbers 18.8, the Bible says, God spoke to you. Know, Here I myself has also given you charge of my Eve offering and holy gifts of the children of Israel. I have given them as a portion to you and your sons as an ordinance forever. Until the oil came up, you know what happened? Aaron was like every other person. Are you getting me? Aaron was walking like every other person. In Israel, one day God set him up, I put his oil on him, and God said, By this oil, I have consecrated him to the office of a priest. Say, Aaron, because I've consecrated, stop walking. Hey, every one of you, when you walk, when you walk, a percentage of everything you make, give it to Aaron. Because I've just consecrated him to the office of the anointed. I've put him in the office of a priest by this oil. So, hey, stop walking. Aaron, all of you, when you walk now, a portion, can you imagine? I don't know how much Aaron was making. But now everybody has to give me percentage. And imagine the number. One man's labor. Now about 10 million people giving him a portion of their earning every month. Can you see what happened? Why? But that did not happen until the oil came upon Aaron. Man of God, how does that apply to me? When the oil comes to me, will I stop working? Please, you have, you have to keep working. Hmm? The same principle, but the other, the other has changed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the oil comes on you, how does that work? God says when it comes on you, I am going to replace your labor with favor. Mm, you didn't hear what I said. As I'm going to replace what? Your labor with favor. I'm going to cause everything to work together for your good. I shared this story last week of how um, Abraham, I remember that. Abraham was going and then when he got to uh, the, the land where Abimelech ruled, you know, as was coming, he already knew. He perceived by the spirit because Abraham was a prophet. He said to the wife, when they ask, who are you? I will not say you are my wife, all right? I will just say you are my sister because... As you find rich, I don't know what gave Abraham that confidence that the wife was so beautiful. But that was no, that was seventy something. He was just proud of some of you. Your wife, you are in your thirties. You are not proud of her. You will be walking on the other side. Say you walk there. You stay that side. Amen. Abraham at seventy something was so proud of his wife. Was he saying that you know you are you are the most beautiful woman in town? Even the king will be jealous when the king sees you at seventy something. Oh, some of you are thirty something. Eh? You are not proud of your wife. Hallelujah. They don't put chingum in your eye when you went to pick her. You see, this thing, marriage is one chance. It's one channel. Once you log on forever, you can't log out. Amen? Even if you have, even, even if your own is without color television, you have to keep watching it like that. Don't look at another man with color television. You are watching your own. Say, this one is black and white. No, stick to your black. Now you pick black and white. You have to stick there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are fortunate, you pick NTA. You stay with NTA forever. Don't be jealous of me when I'm on Super Sports. Hallelujah. And I'm saying, go, go. You stick with it. That's what marriage is. So, you know, and then guess what happened? He, he was he was it. And then when they came, according to the word of Abraham, according to the word of Abraham, the king saw the man come with the wife and said, bring that man. And he said, hey, you, who is that? He said, ah, my sister. And the king said, hey, it's my sister. Okay. From today, I marry her. Take her to the palace. And they gave Abraham one slap. Boah, you get out. Say, yes, sir. He went somewhere. I don't know where he slept that night. Because that was not their town. They were on a journey. 
maybe he managed to get a hotel and if there was no money just find somewhere to sleep amen and i'm sure he must be kind of lamenting over there <laughs> i will love you forever even though abimelech will take you my love will be for you you know you can imagine you can imagine abraham doing all of that and guess what happened by that night amen by that night abimelech was on vitamin c throughout the day was on vitamin d abimelech went to the gym Amen. <laughs> Get ready for a night. Ma, 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 ma. Abimelech says, set the candlelight in the room. The room we put down, man. Set candlelight. Amen. I want a romantic atmosphere. They put everything there. I know. I guess one blues music was just going on. My Lord, there's only you in my life. I'm like, say, my God, my God, my God. Glory. Hey, you know. <laughs> Amen. And by the time Abimelech got in, the Spirit of the Lord said to him, Touch this woman, and you are a dead man. Not just you. I will kill you, kill your wife, kill all your children, destroy your household. And Abimelech in a hurry, in a hurry, guess what? 2 a.m. went out. He was looking for Abraham. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. He was looking for, Where's the husband of that woman? Where's the husband of that woman? I'm sure by daybreak he got Abraham and brought Abraham to the palace. And he said, why do you want to bring this evil upon me and upon the whole of this land? Why did you lie to me? Abraham said, I'm sorry, my king. He said, hey, I'll take your woman. Get out of this house. As Abraham was, he said, come. He said, please, bring money. Bring gold. Bring silver. Bring talent. In millions. He brought money. He said, please, which of my estates are free? Do you have a house in this? He said, I don't have a house. He said, please, bring the lawyer. They did everything and he gave everything. To, he said, please go. I don't want to see you around this palace. That's why I'm making you comfortable. Be Abraham came with nothing. But because the anointing was on him, every decision that looked as if had taken something from him, ended up returning much to his life. I don't know what has taken something from you. It seems as if you lost it because of that stuff. But the anointing this morning is returning back to you. Let me hear your amen like thunder. Number six, the purpose of the anointing is to give you authority. Authority. Hallelujah. It gives you authority. Second Samuel 5, 1 to 3, the Bible says they came and anointed David and made him king over Judah. And seven, the anointing teaches you the truth. You can't be defeated with the anointing. Glory to God. I say you can't be defeated with the anointing. How many of you are anointed? I don't know if you have the anointing on the inside of you. Listen to me. Without the anointing, man goes so far. I'm telling you, without the anointing, man goes so far. Even man, I don't suffer, 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 suffer. Until one day, God put his oil on me. I'm going to talk about that in the second service. That's the real message, man. The purpose of the anointing. There are things that will never happen in your life until the anointing comes on you. There are people you will never meet. When I mean you will, you will never meet them until the anointing comes on you. There are people carrying vital information that are required for your destiny. You won't meet them without the anointing. Because when the oil came on Saul, then someone told him, as you go, you will meet three sets of human beings. And this morning, somebody must meet those three sets of people for your life to hit the next phase. But that's not the, it's the message for the second service. He said, as you live from me, you will meet three people. He said, number one, the first set of people, people you will meet, they will give you vital information. He said, they will tell you, and they told him, they ask that you are looking for, they have been found. He said, number two, you will meet another set of people, they will give you provision. Because some were carrying three kids, out of three kids, three goats, they gave him two. Some were carrying oil and bread, they gave him. And he said, finally, you will meet the third set of people, men who will activate what God has put on your inside. When he came into the company of the prophets, the Bible says, suddenly he began to prophesy. And the whole of Israel saw that he said, he saw also amongst the prophet. And the Bible says, he became a saying in Israel till today, such that when somebody does unusual thing, the nickname they say Saul, it till today. You know, just like in Nigeria now, when you say somebody is solo, you know what I mean. 
I'm not even no solo. <laughs> you don't know solo. You know Mark in the... <laughs> you say solo. Nah, my boy, they call solo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like that. Yes, they gave me sin. They say he's solo also among the prophets. Because that day, he started doing what he has never... They will say about you very soon. When did he start that company? When did he begin it? Ibaolo Bere. Is he also among the people on that Forbes list? Oh, you didn't hear what I said? Forbes just did a rating. 100 most influential people in the world. Amazingly, Sinat entered that list. Oh, you don't know. Sinat entered that list. 100 most influential people in the whole world. Queen Elizabeth was there. The likes of Big Sinat entered that list. Who was Sinat some years ago? My friend told me while we're in Uniport, we're in the same fellowship. I was teaching Sinat Bible. I was teaching him, Amen. Hallelujah. He can't even call him now because doesn't, he said I'm a spiritual father. I said, stay there. Oh, that's all oh, that man, that story now. Who oh, was Hundred most influential people in the world. Sinat entered that list. You know why? The anointing. When did Sinat? How so how did he come here? I'm sorry, his pastor didn't even enter that list. Reverend Chris didn't enter that list. Sinat was in that list. Are you getting me? When, when did he start doing music now? Have you not been doing music before Sinatra? Amen. The only, the only Nigerian gospel artist, the first to hit 100 million likes on YouTube. 100 million. 100 million likes on YouTube. On one of her songs, Waymaker. Amen. She was in Lakewood Church some, some months ago. The first African lady to, to be allowed to, to, to lead worship in Lakewood Church, the largest church in the U.S. Amen. Come and see how white we are doing. Oh, oh. You know you, you know you, you are not emotional with your worship. Oh. Some of you as then they sing, you just stand. We make I make it make the way make I sing now. You know, as you said, come on, lift your hands, we make oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. See the preach where I don't preach preach this morning now to send that America. Oh, oh. You see the problem with African man. Now everywhere he touch. So, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, amen, hallelujah, amen. I just finished preaching uh, um, for, for a church in New York, and then as I finished preaching, uh, we closed the service, and a, a huge man came, you know, very huge, tall, you know, he was like this bodybuilder. He said, Please, can I take a picture with you? Can I have a picture with you? He said, Man, I've not had a sermon like this. I said, Sure, this one, if you're not mentioned somewhere, I don't preach for my church here. Eh? Now this one you call someone. Say, oh my gosh, you're the best. Say, really? I say, thank God at least. <laughs> I was tempted to relocate and start to move my church to the U.S. Say, what's wrong with these people? Amen. I prophesy the anointing is changing the game. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Father, I'm anointed of the Spirit. From today, no more limitation. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Say, Father what has not happened for me before by the reason of this anointing you will make them happen in my life i will meet the right people i will assess the right information for my life to be elevated to the next level in the name of jesus say by the reason of the anointing no more decline my status is changing I'm on my way to better days. In the name of Jesus. Lebra dozo vale ngele mozo ko predebo shata. Igalo zoto shata. Egele mama mama ma. Ege ge 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 mozo pregele mozo to balaba. I like you to pray, 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 pray. is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god let him shut in jesus name we pray say father by the anointing this morning let honor attend to my life you see when god puts honor on you hmm, Everything changes. Oh. Are you with me? I'm telling you, everything changes. Honor, 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 honor. Honor makes you cry for joy. Some of you have been crying, not because of joy, crying out of pain. There are two cry. You can cry out of joy and cry out of pain. Somebody from today, hear me. The next tears on your eyes will be from joy. 
I say I can't hear that amen. If that prophecy is yours, come on, receive it the loud amen. I remember some years ago, amen. I mean, if you will see that in my profile. I went and represented Nigeria at the United Nations um, Youth Summit in New York. And then they said we want to have the African Youth Union, somebody that will represent the whole of Africa at the United Nations. Amen. And then a lot of people wanted to be, I, I didn't even plan for it. So they said they were going to vote. And they wanted somebody from Nigeria to be, I said, okay. A few of us from Nigeria, about seven, eight of us. Hallelujah. But of course, you know, I can talk. Except I want to be quiet. From the day we started the conference, I didn't even know that was going to happen. The natural leadership instinct in me has been showing them the way. No, no, let's do it this way. No, 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 do it this way. No, 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 do it this way. When there's time to talk, some of you think quietness does not help you sometimes. I'm the type who like to answer questions in class. Amen. Because I want you to respect me that I know some to you. Let you help me correct. <laughs> so they said, okay, be on the panel. And then they did, when they did the vote, people from all Africa voted, and I won. I didn't lobby. So they put me on the platform in the United Nations, and they told me to address the same place where the, 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 the president meets. That same room you watch, that's where we had the meeting. And they told me to, and I started crying. Not because I didn't know what to say. Are you getting me? But I was crying, it was tears of joy. Because I remember how I go to school with two holes behind my buttocks that I do like this. I remember it was Elijah Primary School that I went. Amen. Just keep it to the next time I can say it's But I'm just telling you because this someone demands I tell you that. Amen. When I remember all of that, I remember how poor my parents used to be. And I saw myself on the podium of the United Nations addressing people from all over the world i mean all over the world tears coming down my eyes only the anointing made that possible i pray for somebody as the anointing comes on you today every tears that has emanated from shame 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 and delay shame and delay i prophesy they will turn to tears of joy in the name of jesus the lord said i should tell somebody after this anointing within the next 90 days three months from now god said you will eat it big god said you will make it mega he said my name will be glorified in your life he says the anointing will take you from minimum to maximum in the name of jesus finally say father as you want it comes from me this morning Change my story. Let me have stories of joy. Open your mouth and talk to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Any story you want God to change in your life, please talk to him right now. Ushers, help me line up the people. And I hope we can do this in five minutes. Can we? Ministers, will help me now to line them up. Let them come very quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, they're going to line you up. I'm going to anoint everybody very briefly. Amen. Are you getting me? But this is what I want you to do. I'd like you to lift up your desire to the Almighty God. Whatever you want the anointing to do in your life. Believe what God is doing in your life this morning. You are coming back with mighty testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. So if you have things you want God to do for you by the anointing, you want things you want God to change, you have ailments in your body you want God to remove. Of course, we've had enough testimonies in this house to prove that God heals, He moves in His power. I'd like you to open your mouth, amen, and pray as you come to receive the I want you to come praying. Don't come playing. Don't come looking at your neighbor. Behave like you are the only one with God this morning. And then God will do something great in your life. Once I know the crown. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh.